the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The gift of humility. All of you know that I spend much time in Oaxaca, Mexico. And when I was going there, and this is a very impoverished place, I was in the mountains there. When I was going there, I had this attitude, well, I'm going to teach these people because I'm coming from the United States. Not only that, but I have all of these degrees. Mm. <laughs> And, and I had them, you know, I had not just master's degrees, but I had a BA. The only one missing is, is the BS degree. <laughs> it's bachelor's of science. <laughs> but I had this attitude, I'm going to teach them because I know so much. I spent all this time in the seminary and it was they that taught me. When I got there, I had to travel about three hours in, in a bus with uh, not just people there, but there were all sorts of animals. And let me tell you, there were also fleas. Oh, and I think that, uh, yeah, and I think that every single flea called each other <laughs> and said, we've got this Polish smorgasbord here, <laughs> a Polish buffet. But when I got there to the family that I was supposed to stay with, they had 16 kids and two adults. And I had prepared by buying a toothbrush in Walgreens. It was like four bucks, my toothbrush, my own personal toothbrush. And so they didn't have a bathroom inside the house, but outside. And so I brushed my teeth and left my toothbrush there. And I went to sleep, got up in the morning. And to my surprise, one of the 16 kids is using my toothbrush. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh no, I can, I can share anything, but not my toothbrush. And to that, he saw that my expression had changed and that I became visibly angry and agitated and he picks up the one toothbrush that they had for all 16 kids and two adults and he says don't worry you can also use our toothbrush <laughs> and what did i say muchas gracias <laughs> but we live with this attitude of that it's all mine Mm -hmm. and that I know everything that we have is ours not to hoard but to be shared God blesses us to bless others mm -hmm. I am blessed to bless and so are you blessing in order to bless we are embarking upon the time of change, the 40 days of Lent, when we are supposed to be examining our own life to see where we need to change. You know, one of the things that irks me the most about hearing confessions is that when people start in the confessional, they always say, Father, my husband, or Father, my wife, or my children, but what about you? Tell me, you know, what, what about you? Huh? What, 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 what's wrong with you? My husband needs to change. The country needs to change. The politicians need to change. Everybody needs to change except me. And it's I who stand in the need of change. You know, they did studies about uh, alcoholic families and they have found that 60 to 70% of the wives of alcoholics do not want their husbands to quit drinking. They do not want, they do not want their husbands to quit drinking because the alcoholism of the husband provides an excuse. 
justifies their behavior. I have a sorry life. Oh, my sorry life, but my husband drinks. I'm depressed, but my husband drinks. Huh? I'm all disheveled, not put together. I look like a mess. I'm showered, don't get my hair done, don't get my nails done, but my husband drinks. I have an excuse. I'm depressed. Oh, but my husband drinks. Huh? It's all an excuse. It justifies. You want change in your life? You have to bring it to your life. Don't expect somebody else to do it for you. You have to be the one to do it. Hmm? You have to be the change that you want to see in your life and in your family. Don't look for excuses. So this is the time of change in our life. 40 days for us to examine our life. What is it that we need to adjust or change? And don't just be thinking about things that you know you want to give up for 40 days of Lent. If something is bad, why would you want to only give it up the 40 days of Lent? You should be giving it up forever. Like, uh, you know, people say, I'm going to stop drinking Coke for Lent. Drinking Coke is bad for you always. Yes. Hmm? Drink water, not just during Lent. So I invite all of you to look into your lives uh, during these 40 days of Lent, what it is that we need to change and in great humility do it. Hmm? What is it that I'm going to be changing in these 40 days of Lent? Mm -hmm. For that, we need humility. That I am not the last Coca-Cola in the desert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I stand in need of change in my life. I need to change and do it. Not look for excuses. Don't say, you know, my husband's like this, so that gives me an excuse. No. Or my children, no. No. You got to do it. And each one of you needs to see what it is that you have to do in your own life. So this will be my prayer for each and every one of you during these uh, 40 days as we journey together in Lent. Of course, we're starting with Ash Wednesday. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday already. So I have one message for you for Ash Wednesday. Get your ash in church. <laughs> ash. I said ash. Get your ash in church. And it's, a, it's extremely important for us to begin Lent by marking ourselves with the sign of penitence yes. mm -hmm. yeah. and so uh, i hope that um, you take the time to come wednesday we'll have masses uh, their schedule is there for you as you're leaving the church in english at 4 p.m uh, i'll have mass at four o'clock in english on ash wednesday for you to come and get your ash in church and I'll be marking all of you with the, with the start of Lent. So I wish everybody a happy Lent as we journey together, invoking the grace of humility always in our life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and profess our faith.